Hello, everybody. We are going to get started on time here. We appreciate you all driving out here. So I am going to call the meeting to order at 531. Oh, look, I get to bang a gavel. Isn't that exciting? OK. Um, roll call. Tyler is going to take care of that. Hopefully I get names right. Natalie Geisels. Here, present. Polly Boardman. Present. Kristen DeHaan. Present. Tyler Rogers, present. Araceli Martinez. Not here yet. Christine Hall. Present. Christy Essa. Present. Did I say that right? Essa? All right, sweet. This is going to be my job. I've got to get it right. Lauren Rushing. Present. Kaylin Campbell. Present. Adriana Publico. Here. Amy Howe. Present. Brooke Snyder. Present. Do we have a quorum? Great. Do we have any um, item two on the agenda? Do we have any public comment not related to an agenda item? No. It, I'll, I have a, one that's I'll read at the end because okay. the, the general public comment is at the end. Okay. All right. Moving on to item 2.01, the approval of the minutes of October 21st, 2021 of the Zoning Advisory Committee. This is for possible action. Does anybody have any amendments to the minutes? I have one amendment uh, on the last page of the meeting minutes. The next, the next meeting was listed as October 18th. It should be November 18th. So I'd like to propose, uh, yeah, we need to amend that. So. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes as stated with the amendment to uh, the, the, that date on the final page. I second that motion. Any additional discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. All right. Motion passes. Minutes are from the October 21st meeting um, are approved. Okay, item 2.02, .02, discussion and possible action to, the rec to recommend to the Board of Trustees to approve changes to the attendance zones that will impact the following schools. Robert McQueen High School, Verdi Elementary School, Roy Gom Elementary School, B.D. Billinghurst Middle School, Daryl Swope Middle School, and Reno High School, effective beginning with the 2022-23 school year. This item is for possible action. Adam, you're up. Hey, good evening, everyone. For the record, my name is Adam Searcy. I'm the Chief Facilities Officer for the school district. Good to see you, everybody. Thanks for coming all the way out here again and to everybody in the audience. This is going to be almost completely the exact same information that we saw last month at this meeting. Um, we're hopefully, we got some great input last month and we're gonna have some great discussion here tonight. I'll try and go through some of the basics for anybody who maybe isn't familiar with our format and the content from last meeting. Um, but also wanted to mention as we discussed last meeting that this is an area that was discussed by the Zoning Advisory Committee as far back as the 2017, 2018 school year. Some of you were a part of this committee then. Um, and for a variety of reasons, uh, we did not take action at that time. Primarily, one of the biggest differences between then and now is the expansion of Swope Middle School, which is going to allow for the sixth graders currently at GOM to move to middle school in the 22, 23 school year, which changes the conversation a little bit. So without further ado, We'll get into the meat of the presentation. Again, as we saw last week, um, maybe, pardon me, last month, thank you. The, uh, well, just starting with a little orientation for everybody in the audience, you can see uh, the way we like to kind of uh, illustrate these maps. The dark blue lines, uh, you can see my cursor up there. These are the elementary school boundaries. So this that I'm outlining is Westergaard, Winnemucca, Melton, et cetera. 
And you can see Verdi stretches all the way up to, this is McCarran. Okay, so it's kind of got this long tail, but this, this blue line is the Verdi Elementary School zone, and this, of course, is GOMS. The colors represent the middle school enrollment boundaries. So all of this lavender is Billinghurst, and all this green is Swope. And then, more obviously, the area of discussion tonight will be centered around this red star. And just sort of as the crow flies wanted to draw the attention to maybe the primary driver of this recommendation is just that proximity or lack thereof between these neighborhoods and their currently zoned schools. So this is just sort of for orientation. This is zooming in on the existing conditions, again, for orientation. So on this slide, we've still got the blue elementary school boundary lines, the colors representing the middle school enrollment zones. Now we've got this darker gold line, which actually represents the high school enrollment boundaries. So on this side, or the northwest, I guess, uh, is McQueen. And then everybody on the lower right-hand side of this screen is uh, currently zoned for Reno High School. So again, these are existing conditions just for orientation. And I guess worth noting on this slide that this neighborhood here that we're gonna be talking about uh, this evening, these guys are zoned for Verdi Elementary School, currently uh, in the Lavender, then Billinghurst, and then Reno High School in this orientation. So that would make Billinghurst what we commonly refer to as a split feeder, where you've got some of these kids going to Billinghurst and then some of Billinghurst going to McQueen, some of Billinghurst going to Reno, it's not ideal when we can prevent it. So also part of the reason why we're talking about this tonight. Okay, so another common depiction of information at the Zoning Advisory Committee might be a little blurry for those in the audience here, but um, make sure if anybody wants this information, it's available online. These are the current enrollments and capacities of the schools and their projected enrollments. Um, throughout the end of this decade. You can see some of these colored lines, these vertical lines. Uh, these are representative, just sort of signaling to the audience that these major uh, changes or actions that are noted below the opening of a new high school, the elevation of sixth grades to Swope Middle School, things of that nature, those major actions are factored into these numbers and these projections um, at the start of these corresponding school years. So most notably on this slide, you'll see the enrollment numbers at GOM, currently over 400, moving down to 380 at the start of the 22-23 school year. That's prior to any rezoning action, but incorporating the elevation of those sixth graders into SWOPE. Okay, so again, just really for orientation purposes, for everybody, that's uh, listening to this so we know what the current status looks like before we start talking about anything. Okay, so this one's just to reorient you. Again, existing conditions. This West 4th Street area, uh, these are the existing enrollment boundaries. And we're going to look at option one, scenario A1, right there. So what that change did was it moved this blue uh, elementary school enrollment boundary line to align with the Reno High School, McQueen High School boundary. So right up this line and along I-80 and then back down McCarran here. So all of this area that currently on the previous slide six is zoned for Verdi Elementary School is being proposed to go to GOM instead. And the same area is proposed to then matriculate to Swope Middle School. That's why you saw this area turn green. You'll also note that in this option, the high school boundary line is not adjusted. So the impacts to the students, currently this change would impact approximately 52 K through five Verde elementary school students and approximately 29 current Billinghurst Middle School students who would be rezoned uh, to GOM and to Billinghurst respectively. No, again, notably zero high school students affected by this option. 
Next slide is the same scenario one, just zoomed out. So you can see this Verdi Elementary School zone now would extend only to the existing McQueen Reno boundary here. And the, you know, the entire Verdi zone would remain zoned for Billinghurst. And you can see the area that would be impacted by this option turning green and, and going to GOM and Swope. All right. So these are the impact data numbers on scenario A1. I don't know how that's being projected if, I wish I could make it a little more clear for you guys, but the result here is almost neutral on GOM. So as I mentioned, the, at the start of the 22-23 school year, next school year, the sixth graders will be moved up into Swope Middle School. There's approximately 55 of them now, and that corresponds coincidentally very nicely with the approximate number of K-5 students who would be rezoned into GOM. So that enrollment at GOM, the impact of this rezone option to the enrollment at GOM is basically neutral. Similar or conversely, the enrollment impact to Verdi is to actually decrease. Uh, the current enrollment capacity is at 78%, and in 22-23, it would go to 67%. I'll just read these numbers for, in case anybody has as bad eyesight as I do. I can see it clearly on my computer screen. It makes some room for growth is what that does. You can see that, num that enrollment projected to rise um, up to about 75% by the end of the decade. Similar, but to a lesser degree, the impacts are felt at Billinghurst and Swope. So as we saw on the previous slide, students are rezoned essentially in this option out of Billinghurst, making a little bit more room, which is actually needed at Billinghurst, into Swope in 22-23, with, which with its expanded capacity next school year, will easily be able to accommodate those students. And then lastly, for this scenario A1, these numbers for McQueen and Reno are unchanged from their existing conditions and projections because there's no boundary adjustments in option one so, uh, that impact the high schools. Okay, so that's it for option one. And this one is just a reset. All right, here we go back to existing conditions. This is what it looks like now. And we're gonna look at another option two. So this one, is just like option one, except for it expands the, the impacts further west, really to the end of that narrowing Truckee I-80 4th Street corridor and takes all of those neighborhoods, not only into GOM and Swope, but it also adjusts this high school boundary line, which currently is right here, is proposed to remain right here, in option one. In option two, we move the elementary, middle, and high school boundary lines to capture all of these neighborhoods into this rezoning option. You can see the numbers go up on this option as far as projected number of students that are impacted. 82 elementary level students, 42 middle school students, and approximately 15 current high school students would be impacted by this option being rezoned from McQueen to Reno. Okay, so again, zooming back out, just for perspective, same option as the slide previous. This is option two. You can see those same changes, just giving you that perspective between Verdi and GOM and all the other areas of this region. And the impact data associated with this option. Uh, correspondingly, slightly larger number of students impacted by this option. So a slight increase rather than being a neutral change to GOM, we're seeing a slight increase in the enrollment. We're going from an 81 today to an 85% utilization at GOM. The enrollment projection at GOM is very stable throughout the end of the decade. So we're gonna 
projected to remain at that level, but we are seeing a slight increase in projected enrollment to GOM with this option. Conversely, Verdi sees a slightly uh, greater decrease than in option one, from 78% down to 58, and then growing again for the rest of the decade. Same impacts to Billinghurst and Swope, slightly more students coming out of Swope, slightly more students going in, or out of Billinghurst into Swope, then in comparison to option one. And then in the high school level, scenario two, we see 15 or so students coming out of McQueen into Reno High School in this option. So those are the exact same two options, the exact same impact data that we went through last month. There was some discussion about transportation during last month's meeting, as there often is on these rezoning topics. And I tried to summarize the impacts of these options in these bullet points. So I'll just read them and we can talk through what I think they mean, uh, for, if you'd like. Uh, if you receive transportation services currently, you will receive transportation services in either option. So if you receive a bus to Verdi now, but you would be within the walk zone in option one to GOM, because you're so close, we've discussed the fourth street is very much not a walkable corridor, not a safe crossing that the school district would be, we would provide transportation services to those students to GOM in, in either option. So that's just one example. Um, the second bullet, some students currently within the walk zone to Billinghurst in both options and to McQueen only impacted in option two would be provided transportation services. So in the example of Billinghurst, there are some students who are zoned for Billinghurst currently, who are technically within the walk zone and not provided transportation services now. In the either option, those students would be rezoned to Swope. They would be outside of the walk zone. They would be provided transportation services. So just a point of clarification on that one. And then finally, in either scenario, no additional cost. Sometimes we come up with scenarios and hey, you know, it's the best scenario, but it is going to cost the school district additional money or have to create an additional bus route. In working with the transportation department on these proposed rezoning options, they're confident that they can basically just adjust existing routes to accommodate any changes that these rezoning uh, options would create. So no additional costs or really negative impacts on the school district associated with transportation. Uh, would be, would occur in either option. Okay, so also I tried to summarize here. It's kind of helpful when we go through a whole bunch of information, especially the second time around. Looking at these again, these bullet points are kind of just opposites of each other, uh, but starting with option one, it impacts fewer total students, which oftentimes is maybe a more desirable solution. You know, sometimes this, these changes are disruptive. And so if we can achieve our objectives by moving the fewest total number of students, that's oftentimes indicative of a, a superior option. Option one does not impact zoning for any students at the high school level. I wanna make that crystal clear. And option one results in a more uniform enrollment balance across the impacted schools. So while the numbers were fuzzy on the screen, uh, I can assure you if you looked, well, basically, if you look at option two, you're moving more kids from Verdi to GOM, creating a slightly greater imbalance. Option one, fewer kids, it, the numbers are actually more well-balanced and more, more even, more optimal. Option two, it's kind of the opposite points on all of those. So with that, I went ahead and proposed a staff recommendation regarding option one and noting the specific schools that that would and would not affect. And then again, I think it's very important to emphasize that this proposed action is intended to go into effect for next school year because of the time that we have to potentially give families notice and the opportunity that we have next school year with the sixth graders coming up into SWOPE. So that's the staff recommendation. That's the conclusion of the 
content presentation. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. All right. Any clarifying questions or uh, discussion amongst the committee? Adriana Publico for the record. Um, I wasn't able to be here last month, but I watched the meeting on YouTube. So I want to state for disclosure purposes that I have a preschool age nephew who lives in one of the neighborhoods we're discussing tonight. So I have some familiarity with the area, but I don't know the names of the neighborhood. So Adam, we got a lot of public comment from people who live in Mayberry Park and River Park. Can you point those out on the map? I'll give it a shot and then uh, I'm suspecting that I might get an assist from the audience if I'm Sorry, wrong. I thought you knew all of this. You know, these are maybe like uh, colloquial terms, but this here is River Park, I'm pretty sure. River Park is impacted by option two. It is not impacted by option one. Mayberry Park, I believe, I know the Mayberry Park. No. No, it said Mayberry Park. I do know where Mesa Park is. Yeah, Mayberry Park I think is right here off the river. There's not really any residents in this hmm. area. I think this is Mayberry Park, Duroskar Park's maybe a little over here. But I think the takeaway, if, I'm, if I've got my bearings right, uh, is that these neighborhoods are impacted by option two and then Flipping back here to option one, River Park for sure is not impacted whatsoever. And then presuming, yeah, I, again, I'm a little, I don't know, I could use a phone a friend if anybody knows. Maybe some of the folks in the audience will talk to us about that later. Do we, do we have anybody from Mayberry Park? We're totally going off script here, by the way. Just, okay, all right, well. We'll figure it out. Thanks. Yay for Google Earth, right? Yeah, I, I caught this before the meeting, um, so I may have cheated, but there's nobody that lives here, so I was a little puzzled by the question. Yeah. This, this neighborhood is the River Park um, you know, neighborhood, and like I said, it's, it's rezoned in option two. It's not rezoned in option one. Thank you. You bet. Christy Essa for the record. I just had a quick question. How many of the students who are currently in the Billinghurst walk zone, and I think that's up Mesa Park over to the right, would be affected by this? Just the walk zone kids that are currently in Billinghurst walk zone. In option one. Right, so this is option one. Uh, and this is the neighborhood really that would be potentially within the walk zone for Billinghurst that's being proposed to be rezoned to Swope and would be provided transportation services. I don't have the exact number of students who live in that neighborhood. I only have the number by the total number of middle school students. So, you know, even if we assume that there's 29 middle school students in the Billinghurst zone currently uh, who are within the, you know, it's 29 or less. It's probably not all 29, but somewhere in that area. And those, those are already going to Reno High, correct? That's correct. Yep, this option one, this line stays the same. Holly Boardman, is there an option three of not doing anything? Or are we pretty set on not to having a split feeder in this situation? There is always an option to do nothing. Uh, but yeah, we think that this is a win-win for a variety of reasons, balancing enrollments, uh, taking advantage of the opportunity that the sixth graders moving up, creating a more compact neighborhood uh, enrollment zone, improving safety for all these students being transported out to Verdi, creating a little more room at Verdi uh, for future growth. I'm sure there's other reasons that this is uh, being brought forward, but uh, doing nothing is totally always an option. What and it, you know what? A better way to say it is in 2018, 2017, 2018, the committee deliberated just like this and ultimately chose not to take action. 
So while it's not explicitly uh, offered up, that certainly would be an option. Um, Amy Howe, and this is probably for Lauren, but I think in the past we've offered variances to the kids that are in the older grades, and I, I don't think we've said that yet for people to hear that. Correct. So um, any student that would be in the McQueen walk zone or in the Billinghurst walk zone could, let's say they're in seventh grade at Billinghurst, um, they could get a variance for their eighth grade year, and they could still get a variance to McQueen um, and walk to school because they wouldn't need transportation. Um, and Pally, in addition, one of the major reasons that we look at this is if you go back to the first slide, um, the students are on I-80, nine miles traveling in all weather. And we made that drive out here tonight um, for you to see how long of a drive that is for young children to be on a bus. Um, you have a school that is within 1.3 miles of their home. So that is one of the reasons why we brought this to zoning advisory. If I could just add a little bit on the variance as well. I, I really appreciate that question. The, the board policy that governs this committee actually specifically addresses that highest grade rising. So same would apply in elementary school. If you're an incoming fifth grader at Verdi who's impacted by this rezone, you actually would be guaranteed, they call it like a grandfathered variance. Um, but general variances are also often approved. And in these cases, based on the projected enrollments, I think would be viewed favorably. And there would be an opportunity if someone felt strongly that they you know, or have a third grader at Verdi and really, really didn't want to move, um, th there's always, uh, there's, there's opportunities there. Uh, Christine Hull, for the record, I think that this is a really good opportunity to bring up that, the board policy, um, not just on the variances, but also on why we reconsider realigning a school attendance zone and, um, I think that it's just really good for us all to remember that this this is our these are our goals. So the consideration should not be limited to, but are including proximity of students to an individual school, the safety of students, the availability of space, transportation, growth impact as determined by the number and location of approved but unbuilt subdivisions and capacity and enrollment of the school to be rezoned as well as the surrounding schools. So I think when we go back to the, um, the slide on kind of the summary, that really kind of brings up several of those points. Um, and so that is administrative, the board policy 7107. Um, it's on the bottom of our agenda, I believe, or no, sorry. It's on the bottom of our committee homepage on the website. If anybody wants to have it, they're on their laptops. Um, so I, I do think that when we're making decisions, since this is our first decision as a board in person again, <laughs> I think it's important for us to keep all of those things in mind. Um, do we have any other discussion before we open it up to our audience? Adriana Publico, um, Adam, I know that you follow housing trends and know what's in the pipeline as far as residential development, and I was wondering what's on the horizon for both the GOM and Bird Eye attendance zones. So, yeah, absolutely appreciate that. We take great efforts to align our projections with information from all of the local jurisdictions, Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, as well as information from UNR who assimilates and uh, really digests that information. We use our own information to create student generation numbers. The short version is that there's very little in the pipeline as far as re population growth in the GOM enrollment zone, and there is a significant amount in the pipeline in the Verdi enrollment zone. You'll see that in the projections throughout the end of the decade. And if you actually look at the school district's approved 20 year facility master plan, uh, there's an additional elementary even forecasted in the Verdi elementary school zone within the 20 year horizon. So looking at that closely and our crystal ball looking out there, but there's a, a good amount of growth in Verdi and this uh, rezone relief to Verdi helps 
the enrollment zone accommodate that growth? This is Kaylin Campbell for the record. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on uh, option two, the under enrollment in Verdi Elementary School. Um, as a teacher, I know one of the big impacts that comes around October after count day is overages. And if, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with count day and overages, if you don't meet the ratio of uh, students to teachers, students can get overaged and are no longer teaching at that school. And I think that can have a big negative impact on students and classrooms and teachers um, at those schools and I worry about overages at a school that's only 58% capacity um, that that could happen as well. So just kind of wanted to comment and put that in people's brains as we're thinking about our decision. I can, so um, when we allocate the schools, when you make this decision, the movement of the students, the, so GOM, right now with the loss of sixth grade would be projected to lose teachers. With this zoning change, for example, in option one, they probably will not be projected to lose teachers because it's a wash, 52 and 58 students. Verdi will be allocated at um, their current rate of teachers. Um, the hope would be that they weren't overging in the spring, but that we did do the, um, the um, allocations equal to what they are projected for. So in the spring, they do get allocated at projection. It would not affect, um, it will affect Swope, more teachers, and Billinghurst may or may not lose a teacher at 29 to one. All right, I think it's time for some public comments. Harmony Sykes. an easy time to be in the public working in the school schools and dealing with everyone and um, so I really do appreciate all of you taking the time to work on this issue um, I am here as a representative from the River Park neighborhood um, and several families that couldn't be here tonight I have two kids here at Verdi and one at Billinghurst they all started um, at Verdi and um, we are in, op in favor of option one we um, don't want to be rezoned um, we like how the arrangement is. I think one thing on the map that struck me, um, I under, you can see the Verdi commute is long for elementary school kids, but you don't swope and then Reno High, if you look at it as the kids get older and as my kids are driving, you're gonna go from a fairly short drive at where we live up to McQueen and way longer to get to Reno High. So I think that was something that struck me as a, why I'm in, support of option one. Um, and thank you for bringing up the variances. I think some families are really freaking out about that in, in the rezoning thing. So reminding um, families that variances are an option, especially if you have a fifth grader or a seventh grader and that that's gonna affect them for the next year. Um, so anyway, thank you and let's go option one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Nicole Chujular. Hi, my name is Nicole Chuchelern. I live in one of the neighborhoods that is currently being discussed for rezoning, and I'm also the special education teacher at Verdi Elementary School. One of the main concerns for the zoning committee is feeder schools and aligning with their primary schools, and that's not happening in option number one. We already know that Montebello Apartments, Belo Rio, and the 4th Street Corridor are zoned for Verdi Elementary School, Billinghurst Middle School, and Reno High School. There are numerous documents um, that address the need to reduce student movement away from uh, their feeder high school. So I have um, a Hanover research paper that talks about school feeder patterns and the impacts that that has on children um, academically and socially and even graduation rates uh, when they are pulled from um, their friends, their peers, their social groups and moved to a different feeder school. Um, so if anyone wants to see this, I'm gonna leave it right here. Um, so keeping those social relationships is key to academic success and self-esteem. 
by doing this change for option one, we're allowing those students to continue with their peers and not be pulled away from their peers at the end of eighth grade at a time when they're most susceptible to, um, to really some serious social issues. Um, I'm also gonna address the busing from these neighborhoods to Verdi. Uh, we've seen the distance on the map. I actually have a video of just this school year when there wasn't even a delayed start and we had school um, starting on time, the snow on the freeway in October, uh, semi-trucks pulled over, drivers um, with their feet out almost in the street putting on their chains. These are the things that we're dealing with out here um, every time there's inclement weather. And it's not going away. There's no way around it. Uh, there's no back roads. And we're talking about schools that are within the walking zone, as we've previously mentioned, that we're busing. Option number two addresses my neighborhood. And uh, my feelings for this are uh, terribly conflicted because it requires a three school zone change for all of my children. Uh, you know, in the end, uh, it's not a perfect solution either way. We're busing kids further in middle school and um, high school, as Harmony already said, uh, but we're reducing it um, for elementary school. So really, I'm just gonna leave that up to you for option number two because I, I think that's just about as clear as mud to be honest, and um, I'm not gonna say rezone option number one, and then no, don't rezone my neighborhood. I think that's just sort of a decision you guys have to make. Uh, finally, as um, the special ed teacher, there are seven adults in my classroom right now. Mm -hmm. Seven. So when we talk about capacity, I want it to be so clear that classrooms are counted as classrooms, even if they're not being used as classrooms. So in my classroom right now, uh, there are two special education teachers. There's the learning strategist or whatever their new acronym is. There's the speech pathologist. One day a week there's occupational therapy. One day a week there is the school psych. And we are about to lose our music room, which is also a classroom, and we will not have a music room at this school moving forward for the rest of the school year. And so the music teacher will also have her desk in our room. It's a lot of adults, and I need to meet with kids. My kids deserve to have a quiet room to catch up, to close that gap, to meet their needs. They need that space. And I have seven adults. I'm out of time. Um, but I will say that if it's okay with my principal, I would love to show you guys at the end of this meeting my classroom. I'd love to show you how many people are in my classroom. So, thank you. Thank you. The committee also received emailed public comments from Harmony Sykes, Aaron Schulroy, Christopher Hackbush, Bethany Starr, Ty Gregg, Anthony and Shar Paula Ferry, Lindsay Breshears, Mrs. Gonzalez, Jen Myers, Emanuela Heller, Sean Hill, Tara Sy Sala, George Spark Stahl. Jody Anderson and Dora Uchel. Um, I know that there have been some people that have walked in as we were doing this, so I just want to call for any additional public comment on item 2.02. .02. Go ahead. Yes, hi, for the record, Emanuela Helen McNeilich. Sorry, I just walked in and I don't know what was said before, but I was yesterday at a CAPS meeting here and I just wanted to give some feedback to the school district about all this new development that went in and I think it might be good to the Planning Commission of City and City Council to give some feedback that maybe it is to the disadvantage of children and teachers if there will be more developments going in before there is more infrastructure going in. So. And I also wanted to say that with all these new houses going in, like West Meadows has 330 houses, Meridian has hundreds of houses. I mean, it is then just uh, foreseeable that Verde Elementary is bursting out of the seams and we're losing music rooms and other rooms. So um, maybe it is time to move some of those 
other neighborhoods than towards the Roy Gorm area because we are just um, getting development after development but with um, but no infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I see additional people writing their cards, so we'll next. Morgan Gautier? I don't know how to say it. Gautier? Gautier, but Gautier. that works too. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you so much for being here. I do have a question for you, Adam. With the um, proposed building that is supposed to be built, the new building for Verdi, that the developer for the new um, houses right down 4th Street there, or 40, um, when is that supposed to be built? Because we were told that that was supposed to be built as soon as they could tap our school into city water, which has been done. So that should be in consideration that, I don't know if this committee knows that the developer is responsible for building two more classrooms on the um, north side of our school that may help additional um, children coming in. So I just wanted to know the status of that. Um, and also someone who grew up out here in Verdi and went to all of these schools my children now go to. We live in the River Park community. Um, it's the whole reason we bought our house is to make sure that our kids could go to these schools. Um, and I mean, that was a huge financial thing that we did to ensure our kids' education. Um, I was a 16-year-old driving on these freeways going from Belli Ranch all the way into McQueen at the time. So yes, it has become a lot more dangerous with the more traffic on um, the roads, but if we can eliminate some of that, that's great. Um, but also, when you live out in a rural area, there is no way to get around it. You have to, you have to go on the freeway to get to school. So thank you so much. If you can address my question about the new building, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's a good question. Uh, again, Adam Searcy for the record. You know, just to be clear, normally we're not going to have a conversation on public comment, but this is accurate and pertinent information related to Verde Elementary School. Approximately 2015 uh, condition was placed on a development application uh, by the city of Reno to actually uh, provide two additional classrooms to the Verde Elementary School. It's a rather unique uh, condition of approval, but nevertheless, it was uh, approved in that manner by the city council. Upon uh, execution of that agreement, the developer entered into negotiations with the school district. In fact, at that time, uh, it was determined that a new classroom, those new classrooms weren't needed immediately. And rather than constructing, um, you know, prematurely, something of that nature, we negotiated basically a settlement you know, rather than constructing two, two uh, permanent classrooms, the developer wrote the school district a check for, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, it was negotiated, I, I wanna say somewhere around $500,000. And this has been specifically earmarked and set aside in a separate fund uh, exclusively for use at Verdi Elementary School. So at such time that expansion or other capital investments are warranted at Verde Elementary School, those funds are available for only use at Verde Elementary School. That's really where that sits. Thank you, Adam. Do we have any additional public comment? Tessa Lucchese. Well, it's really nerve-wracking up here. Um, I just have a question because we're new to the area, so I'm kind of like, I didn't grow up here, so we're up in the Meridian neighborhood. I just want to know, what is the cap for the schools here, K through five? Is it going to impact if we do change this? Will the cap of the classrooms change? I know my son in kindergarten um, has a very full class. They're going to make three classes. Um, so I just want to see, like, will that continue happening if this doesn't this move doesn't happen will they move in another teacher to make less classes or ultimately what is the cap for the classes thank you for that question that's not within our purview but we are very lucky to have an area superintendent who is really well versed on this stuff so Lauren's gonna take that question really quickly um, so um, teacher ratios are set by the state of Nevada 
So for example, kindergarten is uh, 25 to one ratio. I was pointing at Debbie, my boss is nodding. 25 to one. So at that ratio, that's where we're set. There is flux that we can go over that at times. So um, we use the state ratios at grade levels. Middle schools are, um, Billinghurst is allocated at 29 to one and master schedules are built around that. So those ratios are set, regardless of the enrollment at your school site, all schools receive those allocations. So no, the school will not be affected by the change unless enrollment decreases, then they may or may not lose a teacher. Adriana Publico. Adam, I was curious, at what point do, does the process begin to build those other classrooms at Verdi? Like, it seems like there's a need. I don't know, but it's, it's not full, according to the numbers. So what is the process for determining that build? So every fall, when the enrollments are finalized and certified, mm -hmm. uh, the Capital Projects Department goes through a comprehensive facility utilization analysis, and that really informs recommendations to our one, three, and five-year capital improvement program. So we're analyzing projected developments, you know, maybe that were proposed but haven't quite begun yet. Actual enrollments, there's oftentimes anomalies, people move in and out of neighborhoods in unexpected ways. And we're making those adjustments basically on an annual cycle at the fiscal year. So we'll be making those that we're currently uh, involved in those an analyses right now and we'll bring forth the next fiscal year program here in the spring. Do we have any additional public comment? I don't have any more cards, okay. no. All right, do we have any additional discussion amongst the committee? If not, I'm I will. I'm gonna say one oh, thing here. Sure. Tyler, for the rec Tyler Rogers for the record, I think I'm glad you reminded us of the guiding principles and I think it's, it would be good for us to have a discussion anchored against those if those are the ways that we're supposed to make decisions. So I think going through what I've heard, I'm gonna just sort of speak to each of these. The, the proximity matter of, of closeness to school I feel like is uh, well served by option A1 of moving folks closer to the walk zone of, of Roy Gom. Uh, we've talked about the 4th Street Corridor in terms of safety. I think that's been addressed. Um, space seems to be Pretty clear, Verdi has room, GOM's gonna get more room because of the growth at uh, Swope. Transport's covered. Um, we've talked about the potential growth in Verdi just now and, and continued, and I feel like uh, both options provide for that growth for Verdi. Um, the rezoning optionality, I think that's always on the table, but I feel like we've talked about all of them. I think it's good for us to just sort of look at, the, look at that lens. Thank you, any other discussion? If not, we can entertain a motion. Uh, Adriana Publico, I move that the Zoning Advisory Committee approves the recommended school enrollment boundary, boundary adjustments as provided in option one, impacting the Roy Gom Elementary, Verdi Elementary, Daryl Swope Middle, and BD Billinghurst Middle Schools effective the 22-23 school year. Pushing the mute button. Uh, Kristen DeHaan for the record, I second the motion. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, option one as recommended. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. Great. Thank you everybody from uh, the Verde and GOM areas for attending tonight. We really appreciate you joining us last month and this month. One we'll question. wait to move on till we. <laughs> when, does, when does that then get taken to the board? Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. We're going Tuesday, right? Parents, if you don't mind stopping out there for just one second, the Zoning Advisory Committee makes a recommendation to the Board of Trustees. This will be heard at the Board of Trustees meeting on Tuesday, November 23rd. They must approve and accept this recommendation before it is final. 
and is under their purview. Thank you. <laughs> I'm coming. Yes. I think this one's coming too. I love I love school board <laughs> meetings. We're partners in crime. That's right. <laughs> I'd like to remind the um, committee really quickly here. This next item, oh sorry, you wanna introduce it on the agenda, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, all right, we are, um, we're gonna go ahead and, and move on to item 2.03. Um, and I think Lauren was just gonna say this, so I, I will say it as we're, we're talking. This is for information and discussion only. Um, this is, we are not making any decisions. So for anyone who is from the South Reno area, thank you for driving all the way here. Um, but we are just hearing this for the first time. No decisions will be made. Um, and then when we meet again, January, we will have more discussion. So Lauren, you wanna continue that? And since um, our agenda, we're moving toward the Rio Wrangler um, the south end of our community. Um, we will be holding the meetings out there. We will hold our January meeting at Nick Polakitas Elementary School. We'll hold our February meeting at um, DePoli Middle School and probably our April meeting at Marcy Hers Middle School. So we will move our meetings out there to accommodate the community. Um, this, the reason we held this meeting here tonight was because we were voting on the move of students from Verdi Elementary School, so it was important to be within that community. So our future meetings in January will start out in that area, as you look at all the parents behind me going, thank goodness. Um, yes. We will not be having a meeting in December. That meeting will be canceled. Um, and I will send you guys a new cadence following this meeting so you can kind of see where we're at with the next steps. Um, the reason why we moved to this new um, agenda item was because the board passed um, the building of the new school. So as soon as they pass that, it affects our cadence, and that's when I, why we're gonna be considering these different options for this area. Okay, so officially introducing item 2.03 for information and discussion on possible attendant zone changes to the following schools in the South Meadows area of Washoe County as a result of the approval of the new elementary school in the Rio Wrangler area. It does not have a name yet, by the way. <laughs> Brown Elementary School, Double Diamond Elementary School, and Nick Polakitas Elementary School. So again, this is for information only, so Adam, take it away. Okay. The Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. We don't want to bias ourselves to a future name, but... We're excited to have the Naming Advisory Committee right. take that <laughs> one on. <laughs> Oh, it is totally a thing. Do you have no idea how big of a deal the name of a school is? But we are the Zoning Advisory Committee, and these are the existing zoning boundaries in the affected area. You can see Polakitas, uh, Brown Elementary, Double Diamond, and this guy is the property where we intend to build a new elementary school. As uh, Beth described this only recently, was approved by the school board to proceed. Um, you can see these existing boundary lines. So, so this is the Polakitas zone, and this is the Brown Elementary School zone, and you've got your colors representing the middle schools. Okay, so these are the existing conditions. These are the existing enrollment numbers and projected enrollment numbers. So it's fairly obvious to see why the school board approved the need for another additional elementary school in this area. We've got two out of the three elementary schools over capacity and the combined enrollment actually exceeds the combined maximum capacity today. On this one, you can see the blue line at the start of the 23-24 school year intended to represent the timing of the projected opening of the new school. We don't yet see the results because we're not talking about a specific option yet. But that's why that blue line's there.
I'm sorry, I'm not following the question. So um, if you look at Brown Elementary School, you'll see that they're at 99% enrollment projection at 627. And then you'll see they go up to 107% and then 112% and 114%. When we look down at Nick Polakitis, you'll see that they're already at 129%. They're gonna rise to 132% and then 135%. Sorry, should we wait a minute to the... Okay, so I just wanted to point out, I know it's hard to read on this for the public. So what I was showing was, if you look at the projected enrollment, right, it says, um, I can't even read it, in um, the validation day enrollment, it has um, Brown Elementary School at 99%. And then when you look at the next year, it's 107. The following year, 23, 24 is 112. 24, 25 is 114 percent, right? That's over capacity. And when we look at Nick Polakitis, currently they're at 129%, going up to 132% next year, the following school year, 135%. And then if you see that blue line, Adam, that blue line indicates. The blue line at the start of the 23-24 school year and signifies the anticipated opening of the new elementary school in this Rio Wrangler area. So this is all the reasoning that the school board needed to green light the construction of a new elementary school. There's a lot of kids, it's a very growing neighborhood and we're actively embarking on constructing an additional new elementary school. All right, so that's, that's like old news. That's how it is today. Slide 19 here, this dashed red line represents the original proposed enrollment zone. So back in 2019-2020, uh, the Zoning Advisory Committee spent a whole bunch of time talking about how we might develop the enrollment zone for Marcy Hers Middle School. And a, par a bunch of that discussion centered around moving Brown Elementary School from DePoli into Marcy Hers. So this lighter beige color uh, that has brown and lens and Hunsberger uh, all go to Marcy Hers, which is up here in Arrow Creek and all this like darker tan orange is DePoli. In order to do that, knowing that this new elementary school was projected within the next several years, the Zoning Advisory Committee, we all work together to develop this line here where these colors change as the middle school boundary. What that does is it makes Brown Elementary School a split feeder for this temporary condition. So right now, Brown Elementary School goes all the way up here, if you can follow my cursor. So these neighborhoods go to Brown and then to Poli, and these neighborhoods go to Brown and then Marcy Hers but it was, those actions were taken by the Zoning Advisory Committee with the knowledge that we would be where we are here today in the not too distant future to establish the enrollment zone for the new elementary school and hopefully re reconcile and eliminate this split feeder condition. So while this southern boundary that is coincident with the middle school boundary is not sacred per se, like you could choose to adjust that again. It's important to note that this line was established for the 2020-2021 school year associated with the opening of Marcy Hers. So it's gonna be the staff's recommendation that this line be preserved in its current configuration and that it's really all these other lines that are you know, much more open for discussion. But hey, that's also kind of just background information. This is, this is the proposed enrollment zone that was used during that time for those decisions. This slide are the current and projected enrollments associated with that enrollment zone at, for, for the new Rio Wrangler Elementary School. So taking that same enrollment zone boundary, um, and maybe for those who are familiar with that neighborhood, right? This is Steamboat Parkway coming all the way up to Rio Wrangler Parkway, down to Damani Ranch High School, and then right behind Damani Ranch High School. Those boundary lines. 
these are the projected enrollment numbers based off of that enrollment boundary. So starting in the 23-24 school year, you could see a whole bunch of students being shifted to the new Rio Wrangler area elementary school, taking a portion out of Brown and a portion out of Polakitas. However, as this area has developed slightly uh, differently than was projected even two years ago, you can see this does not result in an ideal enrollment distribution across these four elementary schools. So really for the purposes of introducing this new school rezoning discussion, we're starting from really the first times that this committee started to look at how we might zone this school and then looking at how that zoning boundary might look if it's applied to the most current enrollment projections. So starting there and now looking at another potential zoning alignment for the new elementary school. Again, we're proposing, this is the DeMonte, or pardon me, the Double Diamond Elementary School boundary. Double Diamond Elementary School right here, the DeMonte Ranch Parkway, Steamboat Parkway, and then extending again on Steamboat, but at Rio going north on Rio Wrangler instead of south to DeMonte Ranch High School. And then we'll show on the next couple of slides cutting up a drainage way basically. So this entire neighborhood behind Damani Ranch and to the north of Damani Ranch High School in this scenario would be zoned into Rio Wrangler instead of in the previous scenario remaining in Polakitas. Okay, so everybody can kind of get a sense of the difference between the previous option and this option. This is a zoomed in map on that line just further illustrating why this is a logical place to draw the boundary line. There's no roadway connection between these subdivisions. This is actually a pretty significant drainage way. So while you know on this map, it looked like we're splitting a neighborhood, right, illogically, if you zoom in or if you know these neighborhoods, look at an aerial, there's actually not a significant connection between these neighborhoods and it does represent a logical place to potentially draw that boundary. Just wanted to make that point with this slide. This is just an aerial of the exact same area. So again, now you can see the lack of development, the drainage way, the topography. This is a perfectly good place to draw an enrollment boundary line. And on slide 24, we see the projected impact data associated with this attendance zone. I'll read them. Uh, since I know that's what we want to do. <laughs> anyway, we're still overcrowded until 23-24, but in 23-24, uh, we opened the new Rio Wrangler Elementary School at a projected uh, enrollment utilization of 84%. Polakitas would be at 87, Double Diamond 78, and Brown 75. So a pretty good balance there. Um, you can see in this scenario, the brown and double diamond enrollment zones are relatively built out or stable enrollments. The Polakitas and Rio Wrangler zones have a little bit more development still projected throughout the decade, particularly Polakitas in this current scenario. And I'm just going to put an asterisk on that right now. When we go down to Polakitas and to Poly, like Lawrence said, we're gonna get quite a bit more into the weeds and the details and the options. And there are impacts forecasted associated with new developments, namely the Daybreak or Talus Valley development, which are incorporated into these numbers and are currently within the Polakitas enrollment zone. That's something we're analyzing now and we're gonna uh, pr present additional options to the committee and to the community in the coming months. But for the purposes of kind of Introducing this topic, we wanted to start with sort of the base option and then look at what we think is maybe the next best option or a, a better option. Um, certainly, and as you guys have experienced, as we continue to talk about this, better options or versions of these options will be proposed and discussed. But this is really where we're at. So I just put this next step slide. We've kind of touched on all of this. We're gonna get into a lot more depth and detail. We're gonna go down into this community and 
uh, invite all of our neighbors to tell us more about where they live and how they uh, get about. Um, and also an important point of clarification, as opposed to the action that you all just took, this discussion would be proposed to go into effect the 23-24 school year to give everybody appropriate advance notice and then of course to give us time to build a new school. But that's it. We didn't want to get too intense on the first night. We've got some options. We're going to go down to South Reno and dive all the way in. It would be great if we got some initial feedback. We've gotten public comment, but your input here tonight would help us inform any future material that we develop between now and January. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Adam. And I think that we've, we've all done a really good job on this committee of, of making sure that everyone in the public and on our committee knows our relationships to these schools. So my children go to Polakitis. Christine, hold for the record. Sorry. Um, and I just want to make that clear that I, um, ha I live in this area. Um, and I was pretty involved on the community side of these initial discussions before Polakitis opened. So I, um, I appreciate all of the work that staff has been doing on this. And we know that it's hard because there's been multiple zoning changes in this area because we've needed to open multiple schools. We had two elementary schools at incredible capacities. Um, Double Diamond and Brown wound up going on year round. And so we, we're all aware of that. And so we do understand that this is hard on the community to have another zoning change. So um, I appreciate all of Adam's and his office's diligent work on making sure that we're impacting the least amount of students, but making these schools as even as possible. Um, you know, we have four portables in a brand new school, and that's, that's not really what we want. So any discussion before we take some public comment? Uh, Natalie Geisels, my question would be, um, do, do we know if that area is completely built out now? Um, I live up, um, my kids go to Huntsburger, so when I drive down there, I see the different building, and I'm just wondering, do we know, is there any other area to build? So, you know, we're not, we're not rezoning every two or three years as the builders build. Do we know what, what that looks like? Adam, you wanna, you wanna take that? You bet. Uh, it is very much not built out. There will be a tremendous amount of continued residential development in this area. And we have a very good uh, understanding of where and when that's going to occur. And to the best of our ability, we're going to take that into consideration when we're developing our projections and our proposed enrollment boundaries. But yeah, this is an area of tremendous growth. It has been for many, many years. And that's really what creates that, what feels like continuous cycle of growth, overcrowding, additional school infrastructure development, rezoning, change, growth, overcrowding. That's really just the nature of a, a, a high growth area. And that's going to continue but our job is to understand that and forecast it and plan accordingly. Uh, Christine Holigan, for the record, I think it's really similar to what the, the Spanish Springs area experienced about 15 to 20 years ago. There was just this huge boom going up Sparks Boulevard and Pyramid and multiple schools were built and lots of changes were made. So, so if anybody is from that area, that was a experience <laughs> for I grew up in Sparks so I can say that that's that's exactly what's happening but no it's not done there's thousands of homes going in oh yeah <laughs> but but Adam does a great job as he says baking in the number so those numbers that we saw include the approved and proposed growth um, to the best of their ability I think we, we all experienced that at Polakitis when it opened and Sky Ranch and several of the other new schools that people want to go to new schools sometimes and so they tend to buy in those neighborhoods as well. So we did see a little bit of change in those numbers, but they do a good job at, at those numbers, yeah. Any other discussion? Christy Essa, yes, for the record, I just had two quick questions. Are those numbers inclusive of fifth grades, I'm sorry, sixth grade going to middle school or are those numbers where the sixth graders are still in the elementary school? Yeah, so, so all the elementary schools in this area currently have their sixth graders in the middle schools. So all of these schools are or would be in the case of Rio Wrangler, K through five. And does this option 
eliminate the need for year-round schools at some of these locations, or is that still gonna be a problem even if we re rezone? Are they still going to have the year-round issue? Uh, no, they will not, and they don't currently. So just to clarify, as uh, Chair Christine mentioned uh, years ago, they had multi-track year-round. Uh, recently, we've been able to eliminate that. There are four and five portable classrooms, respectively, at Polakitas and Brown Elementary School, so that's not ideal, and that's really what we're trying to get away from. There's overcrowding. They're not multi-track year-round schools, but in either scenario, that would be eliminated. And this does not take into account those portables that are there as far as capacity goes. This is just physical buildings that were, the, how the school was designed capacities. Yep, always important to clarify that on the record. When we talk about base capacity of the permanent facility, we do not, or rather when we talk about say, hey, this school is at 120% of capacity, that does not factor in the additional classrooms provided by the portables. Those are, excellent classrooms, but they don't provide for additional parking room, parking spaces, cafeteria spaces, music rooms, things of that nature. So we don't count those in these uh, utilization percentages. Kristen DeHaan for the record. Um, looking at Brown as it's projected out, um, it's just getting lower and lower. So is, are we just thinking that those developments are going to be aging up so there won't be new elementary school kids because it goes from 75 down to 67 percent capacity in 2031-2032. Yeah to a so, degree that that sometimes can reflect really an aging subdivision that's having children you know move out through the school sometimes it, it's reflective of the the lower grade enrollments, you know, if you have 100 students in fifth grade and 75 students coming in in kindergarten, the net enrollment's going to decrease. And there, there can be a variety of other factors that influence that. But the brown enrollment zone is relatively stable for that area. Adriana Publico, I just want to make sure I understand the feeder patterns correctly. So. Students who go to Polakitas and Double Diamond now, they all go to DePoli when they go to middle school, correct? Can you say that again? Okay. Sorry. I'm wondering if Brown is currently a split feeder and the only one. Yes and yes. Okay. From the middle school, do all of the students who go to HERS go to Galena and all of the students who go to DePoli go to D Damani? Yes and yes. Okay, yes. cool. Thank you. That was a huge issue in 1920. Everybody, you know, Brown, that community, they said, we want, we want to make sure wherever we go to middle school, whether it's DePoli or hers, that we stay with our classmates to high school. So we rezoned that community into Galena High School from Damani, et cetera. Um, that was a big deal. So that split feeder has been reconciled. This split feeder or Brown to, Brown Elementary to Middle was intentionally created yeah. with the knowledge that in just a few years we would be having this conversation and we could eliminate it. So that little orange corner is what we used to call Baby Brown a few years ago in that discussion? I'm really touched that you remember that. That's, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. I, yes. was, I was just... In the uh, audience at that point, but I was following the conversation, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. I was trying to come up with a different word than touch, but <laughs> it, that warms my heart. That's awesome. We do try to have a little bit of fun here. Okay, I think we will take public comment now unless there's anything else. Okay. Jen Lassie. I think oh, I got, got it. it. I think I figured it out. Tech savvy. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to first clarify that this is not going to be effective for the next school year. It's the following. Okay, our biggest concern was just them getting moved from one school to another school. And so that's great. 
and we are all going to be affected moving to the new Rio Wrangler School, and I think it's wonderful. We are in walking distance to it. Ms. Politidis is overwhelmed, and the teachers are overwhelmed, and they're doing a wonderful job, but I just, that was it, so thank you guys. Thank you very much. Do we have any other public comment? No more in person, but you received emails from Shauna Jones, Candace King Solver, Carrie Gannon, Devin Church, Megan Dugan, Julie Kewe Kewanayama, Ansley Winter, and Laurel Ballantyne Muchiko. Also, John Ott. I'm going to put that. Okay, uh, if we have nothing else, we will take public general public comment now for item 3.01 as we begin to close. I don't have any. Okay. All right, well, then the next meeting is on the agenda as December 16th, but as Lauren mentioned, um, we are not meeting in December, so we will be at Nick Polakitis in January. Do we know the date? I don't remember. The third Thursday, whatever the third Thursday is. January 20th of 2022. Wow. Um, and with that, item 3.03 .03 is adjourning the meeting. So I will officially adjourn the meeting. Do I do my gavel again? Totally, totally. totally. I gotta do the gavel. Okay, thanks everybody.